Hello there. Welcome to Letters and Numbers, where speed, skill and a good dose of brain power is all that you will need to come out on top. And two people at the peak of their powers. First of all, the composed and computational Lily Cerner. Hi, Richard. You do always seem very composed, Lily, very calm. I mean, before you have to perform, is that really how you are? No. <laughs> I, I'm, I wish I was, but I'm, I'm a nervous Nelly, actually. Not like you. You always appear so calm and collected. Well, I, you know, I guess I try to appear calm and collected, but underneath the water, the little feet are paddling furiously, let me tell you. Welcome, Lily. Thank you. And also, let's welcome the low-key and loquacious David Astle. How are you? Now, you are always, you know, calm and well in control, aren't you? Uh, look, uh, I think a, a bit of anxiety is uh, not a bad thing. I did uh, confess on uh, last night's show that I felt a moment of panic, mm. but I think just a little bit of anxiety in the fuel actually makes for a fairly healthy engine. Well, it's a lot of pressure to come up with, you know, more than five letters every time, six, seven, eight. Occasionally, so a little the bit full of, Monty. A little bit of empathy for, uh, for our contestants as well. <laughs> well, let's say hello to them now. Let's, in fact, meet the people who are going to play our game tonight and our uh, carryover champion, first of all, Graham Smith, who has his own business providing timing and scoring equipment for sport. Hello, Graham. Good evening, uh, Richard. And welcome to the carryover champion chair. Thank you. Moving into a, an entirely different direction, you, in your home environment, are much more self-sufficient than most people. Uh, not as much as I'd like to be, but, yeah, we've got a small hobby farm with um, quite a few different animals there. But you managed to feed yourself, you know, both from the vegetable garden and from the, from the animals that you raise? No, I'm afraid the vegetable garden's a bit of a disappointment, uh, Richard. I've got to work on that one. <laughs> well, good to know that, uh, that you're looking after yourself. So, welcome back, Graham. Sure. And here to challenge Graham is Pat Sincock, a company director in the transport and logistics sector. Hello, Pat. Hello, Richard. Now, your business in this transport and logistics area has actually grown very uh, significantly over the years. It, yes, it most definitely has. Um, we started uh, in uh, 1999 with just two of us, and uh, now we're about 45. What sort of services do you provide in a practical sense? Um, well, we do um, lots of management training, some sales, marketing, uh, but also a lot of things like truck driving, forklift driving and um, general sort of stores work and stuff along those lines, yeah. Sounds fascinating stuff. Mm. Great to have you on the program Thank and you. good luck tonight. So, a big welcome to both of them, please. Graham Smith and Pat Sincock. <laughs> and let's get underway with our first puzzle of the night, the letters game. Contestants make the longest word that they can out of the letters chosen from the two piles, the vowels and the consonants. And, uh, Graham, I think you're probably familiar with the job at hand now, so uh, start choosing, Thank please. Thank you, Richard. Good evening, Lily. Hi, Graham. Uh, we'll start off with a, a vowel, please, Lily. Thank you. Let's start with an E. And another one, please. A. We'll go to our first consonant. B. And another one. T. And another one, please. D. Uh, we'll go back to a, a vowel, please. U. And another consonant. N. And we'll try one more consonant. S. And uh, we'll finish off with a vowel, please. And last letter, I. Here's the first clock. First word for the night, Graham. How many? I struggled badly with those letters. I can only see five there. Five for you and uh, Pat? Uh, I think I've got a seven. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Graham, your five. Bands. And your seven, Pat? Instead. Instead. Well, that's a good word, David. You certainly do have a, a seven, Pat. Well played. A great start. I found a, a lovely eight here with uh, unbiased. Very nice, and no panic involved. No panic at all. <laughs> well done, David. <laughs> well, well done to Pat. Great start. Seven points. On we go with the next letters game for tonight, and uh, this time, Pat, you to choose. Um, can I start with a consonant, please? Thanks, Pat. F. 
Uh, and I'll have another consonant, please. R. Uh, and then can I have a vowel? E. And another consonant? H. Uh, and I'll have another vowel, please. O. Um, and then another vowel? E. Uh, a consonant? F. And another consonant, please. T. And lastly... And lastly, uh, I have another consonant. Thanks. D. And time starts now. How did you go, Pat? Uh, I think I got another seven. OK, that sounds great. Graham? No, only six, Richard. Let's start there, please. Uh, we've got uh, effort. And your seven, Pat? Um, frothed. Frothed. The cappuccino <laughs> maker. It's a bar barista talk. It is, and maybe Graham's frothing for missing it. It's a great seven. Well done, Pat. Uh, you're really off and running here. And ad adding a, uh, an E to frothed, there's a uh, beautiful nautical word, fothered. F-O-T-H-E-R-E-D. And for those who enjoy their Captain Cook story, I do believe that he actually, um, when he struck the reef uh, in northern Queensland, he had to um, take shore and fother the endeavour, that is, to, to cover that hole with uh, sail and tarpaulin. Very interesting word. Thank you, David. But well done again to Pat. Another seven points. Let's test the computational skills now with our first numbers game for tonight. And, uh, Graham, could you get us going, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, Lily, I'll have uh, two large and four small, please. Thanks, Graham. Two large, four small. And our numbers are nine, seven, seven, one. Two large, 50 and 25. The target to reach is 814. Thanks, Lily. And 30 seconds to find the target. Well, Graham, I just saw you shaking your head there. How close did you get? Oh, I think I can get 800, which is not close enough. 800 is not within the scoring range. Has to be within 10 of the uh, the target. What about mm. you, Pat? 823. Just nine, nine away from the the target, so it is within our scoring area. So um, tell us how you got there. Lily, I've got um, 50 plus 25. 50 plus 25 uh, plus one of the sevens. Plus the seven is. Uh, uh, plus one, sorry. <laughs> plus one. Is 83. Let me, th yeah, let me see. Um, 83, yep. Yeah. Uh, times 10. By 10. Is 8.30 and minus the 7. Oh. Which 10? Oh, we... 9 plus 1. No. I've used the 1 twice. Yes. No, sorry. Oh, dear. So, unfortunately, for both Pat and Graham, no luck on this one, Lily. How did you go? I managed to get there and actually I, I got there right at the end because I got stuck on one method and, and trying to kind of fix it but it didn't work. Um, my immediate thought was uh, 16 times 50 is 800, how can I make 16? And there's an, there's an obvious way which is um, 9 plus 7 but that way gets you nowhere. Um, Turns out there's another way of making a 16 if you take away 9 from 25 um, which frees up the two 7s to make 14. So. I'll talk you through it if that didn't make sense. No, it did make, make perfect sense, but let's see it on the board. OK, 25 minus 9 is 16. By the 50 is 800. And then add on your two sevens, which gives you 814. Lovely work. Well done, Lily. But um, unfortunately, in that round, no score for either Graham or Pat. So at this stage, Pat is leading on 14 points as we head into our first break and the first word mix for tonight, crop sum. And the clue, 
a calm and tranquil author. Back shortly. <laughs>